G'day and welcome to the Jade Rat. This is like the fifth or sixth time I've tried to get lucky on camera. Um, but today, today we're going to do a uh, book review, really quick book review, and um, we'll see how it goes. So today we are reviewing Noonshade by James Barclay. And uh, this is a sequel to Dawn Thief by uh, James Barclay and it is the second book in the Raven Chronicles. So, um, so first is Dawn Thief, then we have Noonshade, this one, and then finally we have Night Child, which is what I'm currently reading. And if I had to give this uh, book a score, I'd give it 70%, don't you reckon? Yeah? 70%. Uh, seven out of uh, seventy out of hundred, and uh, the reason why I come up here, thank you. The reason why I've uh, given that score is actually because uh, it is a sequel. So, all right. So the reason why I've given it um, seventy out of hundred is uh, first off because it is a sequel. Um, so in order to fully comprehend and enjoy this book like 100%, um, you do need to read the first one, Dawn Thief. Um, and as you know, uh, with Dawn Thief that I mentioned in my Dawn Thief review, that uh, it is a book that you can read on its own. You don't need to read the sequel to get the finish the story or, or complete the narrative fully. So... Uh, Noonshade unfortunately does not do that and uh, I personally uh, don't mind however I also uh, am one of those people where if I start the book from the middle of the series I have to, I feel obligated to read the rest of it so if you're uh, looking for a sort of one-off book don't go for uh, Noonshade definitely go for Dawn Thief though um, and as such a lot of the stuff that I'll be saying in today's review uh, are sort of spoilers for Dawn Thief and um, I think uh, the writing style is the same uh, James Barkley does a very good uh, way of writing both narrative and sort of interesting action pieces and they're not, they're not uh, unnecessarily uh, brutal or shocking like Game of Thrones is, but um, it is suitable for a fantasy uh, series that sort of deals with um, war and uh, dangerous magic and eventually dragons, um, as is all fantasy books <laughs> involving dragons, they're, they're very dangerous and um, it's written really well. Uh, all of the characters, there's no, there's no shifts between the characters and um, the only uh, thing I would recommend is to read them one after the other because I have this thing where I sort of stopped in between to, um, I, I went overseas and then I sort of started to forget like what happened in the first book. So if, if possible, read them one after the other. And um, I think that's about it for non-spoilers. Um, and then now going to spoiler territory, the characters are pretty much the same. We, we're using the same roster of characters uh, from the end of Dawn Thief. And uh, the story pretty much picks up like, you know, like in John Wick and then John Wick 2, how it's like only moments after. Uh, the end of the first uh, story. So same thing with Dawn Thief and uh, Noonshade. It's pretty much you have a conclusive ending for Dawn Thief and then quite literally minutes later you start for Noonshade and you, you're working towards uh, what happened like moments prior. And uh, in terms of the story, uh, the solution... To the first book is actually the problem in the second. So um, 
I mentioned that there's there's a very interesting way of uh, using magic system and there's a, a really almost technical academic approach to it and similarly this one is it is like you get a bunch of professionals to do some big research and create some development and then it's caused a problem sort of like how uh, nuclear science has progressed so you have the dawn thief spell which was like the trump card and the winning thing for the first book and then unfortunately because uh, that spell wasn't um, understood and then implemented uh, correctly or was not designed to be uh, used in the way that it was used uh, that results in these after effects that they have to fix and then resulting in uh, all of these catastrophes and problems and still the sort of civil civilish war um, the the war between the two halves of the country uh, still hasn't finished there's still there's still some places that are occupied by uh, the enemy and we're still reeling from the effects of the invasion from the first book so there's a lot of cleanup that's involved in this one uh, clearing out um, uh, barons and uh, military leaders they're still working on uh, removing all of the oppression from the first book as well as the main characters being forced into another dimension to fix this problem that they created unknowingly in the first book so that's a really interesting um, theory and idea to sort of go off for a book you know that the solution the, the thing that solves everything which is the dawn thief spell um, ends up causing more problems than it's worth um, although uh, true to many fantasy novels they do uh, fix it in the end but there is of course um, a price to pay uh, particularly for the dragons which are involved and um, currently uh, I'm reading the third book and there's some things that still haven't been resolved so that's uh, very interesting and I would recommend it if you like um, if you like this sort of technical uh, like fantasy it's not like technical technical but it's not like studying engineering technical but um, there's a lot of uh, parallels to like how um, schools of thought, schools of philosophy um, and law and uh, how people um, argue over uh, interpretations of books and languages and stories it, it there's a great basis for that and um, Noonshade in particular uh, does deal with this sort of theme of how uh, we create something that's sort of like a doomsday uh, invention sort of like um, the nuclear bomb and there's this sort of uh, like aspect of mutually assured destruction um, that is involved and it's and sort of the same with uh, the dawn thief spell it's designed to remove quite literally steal the light and remove everything and then throw it into the void um, causing rips in, in magical dimensions but uh, also there's this uh, idea that we don't have a solution to the problem because if you ever get to the point of using a doomsday device like that no one's going to be around to fix the dimensional rips and all of that problems so you don't need to worry about it so here instead of the characters instead of looking for a um looking to the ruins of this uh, genius wizard to find the spell they have to look through his works and then figure out how to uh, stop the effects of the spell um but as it turns out, he 
he didn't really expect a closing for the spell. So uh, they have to sort of improvise it. And the stakes are higher in the sense that uh, before the enemy was just like people which was like the warring sides between the country. The enemy were the people, but now the enemy are warring dragons. So there's like the good dragons and then the bad dragons. And unfortunately, if you can't close the rip, the bad dragons will invade and then everybody's like toast. So um, that's about it. And I've rambled for too long. And Lucky has run away, so I had to put her put her back. Um, she wasn't very interested in what we were doing. Uh, so that's it. Um, would recommend. It's a good book if you read the first one. It's pretty good. Um, much in the similar vein. And uh, that's about it. Uh, see you later. Have a good one. Bye all. Take two. All right.